went to step on a big cockroach, I swear to God it was this big, and it screamed at me. <laughs> and it was so funny. Like, bulk. Like, you know, like, 
have this veneer of like proper behavior, but underneath is this roiling, passionate thing. Yeah. Yeah. What is it when Vulcans like they're mating and they go crazy? Yeah. That's they're always the English are always on them. Monfar. They're always in the monfar. Historically, they were sort of the barbarians to the north. Yeah. I'm a Saxon. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Hi, I'm a really young watcher, and as you know, in Buffy, there are a lot of allegories or life lessons, especially for a teenager. I was wondering what your favorite allegory or metaphor was to film. Nick? <laughs> I've always said, if you're making love, you're 2,000 pounds of your mother. I another girl says it's open. Uh, 
she, she wanted me to take her trick or treating. And that day, um, we happened to be doing Spike and Vamp picks. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to go as Spike tonight. <laughs> so I kept the costume. And it's like, you know, like they released us, and I just got the car as Spike. <laughs> And uh, we walked around the neighborhood you know, all night, you know, nobody <laughs> I just, I just kept hearing, great spike. I'm like, I'm like, On. Like when I had the worst battering and bruising and bloody stuff, I would keep my makeup on and then like like drive through a track. <laughs> <laughs> I did that one time and uh, like I kind of forgot, you know, because like you get tired. We were known as Buffy the Weekends. <laughs> like we would work 12 to 20 hours a day, right? So when they released you, you want to go home and go to bed. And I forgot to wipe my you know, blood off my face and I was driving home and cops. <laughs> They were serious. They're like, who did you kill? <laughs> they can tell the difference between like a wound and like as if you like got someone's carotid artery and got splattered with it. They're just like, what? You know? I'm like, really? No, no. It's just, it's just, see, it's just, it's, it's, it's sweet. It's, <laughs>
six that they did, that, that I had to do to whoever they told me to do it, whenever they told me to do it, wear or not wear, whatever they told me to not wear. And I got I got seriously terrified. It, was, it, it started to become hard to come to work. It started to get hard to get out of bed. Because usually, like on a TV show, once you film the pilot, you know what you're basically going to be doing for the next seven years. Because most television shows are boring. And most television shows do the same thing over and over and over again. So that, that's it. That's, there's a safety in that. With a film, you can read it before you sign the contract and say, okay, I can do that, or I want to do that, or I don't want to do that, I pass. But with Joss Whedon, <laughs> there's no rules at all. And you have no idea what you're going to be asked to do. And it's, it, artistically, I mean, in hindsight, I'm like, man, that was awesome. I'm very proud of it. In the moment, I was terrified, truly terrified. But one of my, one of my favorite things was um, we would often have directors come in that had never seen the show before. And so they, I remember you were wounded. You, you were wounded over in Buffy's house, and everyone's crowded around you, and like, oh, Xander, are you okay? Right? And I'm over in the corner just going, yeah. And the director comes up to me and he goes, hey, man, you know, Xander is hurt. And you're, you're a regular, and he's a regular. you got to go care about him. And I'm like, no, it's okay. No, Bobby's important. It's their sister, I suppose. But I, don't know that thing. I would not have done it to be structured. Wait for the news. I should try that. <laughs> 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 